Good morning, I am Society Archer, and welcome to another episode of Readings of the Poetic Edda. And as, as usual, we will be using the translation by Caroline Larrington from the Oxford World's Classics. This episode, we will be reading Hymir's Poem. Hymir's poem is badly preserved in the manuscript, but we can fill in the gaps from Snorri. Snorri being the individual who wrote the prose, who assembled the prose Edda. The gods decide to have a feast and compel the giant Aesir to prepare it. This may reflect Scandinavian royal practices in which the king enforces his authority on his subordinates by visiting their homes and demanding to be feasted. Cunningly, Aesir demands an enormous cauldron in which to brew beer for the feast. This can only be obtained with great danger from the giant Hymer. Tyr, who was probably not the original protagonist of the poem, and Thor set off to try to obtain the cauldron. Like most encounters between Thor and the giants, the adventure turns into a tri trial of strength. The gods are aided by a giant woman who gives them advice at crucial moments. Embedded in the adventure of fe fetching the cauldron is the tale of Thor and Hymer's fishing expedition, in which Thor almost catches the Midgard serpent and demonstrates his strength. This is an ancient style, depicted on several Viking Age picture stones. So that's the little the forward for the section. It paints a pretty good picture. <clears throat> so let's begin. In bygone days, the slaughter gods had a good bag from hunting. They were keen to drink before they got enough. They shook the twigs and looked at the augury. They found, found that at Azir's was an ample choice of cauldrons. The mountain dweller sat there, cheerful as a child, very like the mash blender's son. Odin's son looked into his eyes in defiance. You shall prepare a feast for the Azir. The contentious man annoyed the giant. He thought how to avenge himself soon on the god. He asked Sif's husband to fetch him a cauldron, in which I can brew the ale for all of you. Nor could the glorious gods, the mighty powers, get one anywhere, until privately Tyr, in trustworthy friendship, gave vital good advice to Laradir. To the east of, Il of Ilavagar lives Hymir, the very wise, at the sky's end. My father, the brave man, owns a cauldron, a capacious kettle a league deep. Do you know if we can get that liquid boiler? If, friend, we use trickery to do it. They journeyed hard through that, that day and far from Asgard, and they came to Igir. He secured their goats with splendid horns. They headed for the hall which Hymir owned. The lad found his grandmother, very ugly she seemed to him. Nine hundred heads she had. And another woman, all gold-decked, walked forward with shining brows, bearing beer to her boy. Kinsmen of giants, I'd like to seat you, two valiant men under the cauldrons. My beloved, on many occasions, is stingy to guests, prone to enmity. Misshapen, stern-minded Hymir came back late from hunting. He entered the hall, the icicles tinkled. When he came in, the old man's cheek forest was frozen. Greetings, Hymir, be of good humor. Now our son has come to your hall. He whom we've expected on his long journeyings. Hrod's adversary accompanies him. The friend of warriors, Vior is his name. See where they sit under the hall gable. They protect themselves so with a pillar in front of them. A sun to the pillar splintered at the giant's gaze, just before the crossbeam broke in two. Eight kettles smashed to pieces, but one of them, a strong forged cauldron, fell whole from the peg. Forward they went, and the ancient giant turned his gaze on his enemy. His mind didn't speak encouragingly to him when he saw the one who makes the giantess weep walking across the floor. Then three bulls were taken. The giant ordered them quickly to be boiled up. Each one they made shorter by a head and bore them off to the cooking pit. Sif's husband ate before he went to bed. On his own, he ate right up two of Hymir's oxen. It seemed to, her, to Hrungnir's gray-haired friend that Chloridi had consumed a considerable amount. Tomorrow evening we three must live on food that we have hunted ourselves. 
Thor said he wanted to row out in the bay if the bow giant would give him bait. Go to the herds if you've the guts for it. Mountain giant breaker to look for bait. I expect that it'll be easy for you to get bait from the oxen. The young man hastened smartly to the woods. There stood an ox jet black before him. That ogre slayer broke off from the bull. The horn's high meadow tore off its head. Hymir said, Your deed seems much worse, captain of ships, than if you had sat still quietly. The lord of goats told the ape's offspring to row the launchway horse out farther. But the giant said for his part he wasn't eager to row farther out. The brave and famous Hymir alone caught two whales at once on his hook. And back in the stern, Odin's kinsman, Thor, cunningly laid out his line. The protector of humans, the serpent's sole slayer, baited his hook with the ox's head. The one whom the gods hate, the all-lands girdler, from below gave to wide over the hook. Then very bravely, Thor, doer of great deeds, pulled the poison-gleaming serpent up on board. With his hammer, he violently struck from above the hideous one, the wolf's intimate brother's head. The sea wolf shrieked and the rock bottom re-echoed. All the ancient earth was collapsing. Then that fish sank itself into the sea. The giant wasn't jolly as he rolled back. At first, Hymir didn't say a word. He swung round the rowing, completely changed tack. You'll be doing half the work with me if you carry the whales home to the farm or pin up our floating goat. Laurady went forward and gripped the prow. Alone he lifted the sea stein with its bilge water, with oars and baler. He brought the giant sea pigs home to the farm, through the hollow in the wooded ridge. And still the giant, habitually contentious, strove with Thor about his strength. He said no man was strong, even if he could row mightily, if he could not smash the goblet. And quickly Thor, when he laid hands on it, smashed through the towering stone with the glass. Sitting, he slung it through the columns that carried a hole back to Hamir. Until the beautiful, beloved lady gave him vital, friendly advice which she knew. Smash it on Hymir's skull, the food sated giants that's harder than any goblet. The strong man, Lord of Goats, rose, bracing his knees for all his divine power to bear. Whole was the old man's helmet stump above, and the round wine vessel broke apart. Great treasures I know I've lost. When I see the goblet leaving my lap, the old man announced, Never again can I say, Ale, you are brewed. Now it's up to you if you can manage to take the beer boat out of our court. Tyr tried twice to move the cauldron. Both times the cauldron stayed immovable. Modi's father took it by the rim, and he stamped down through the floor in the hall. Sif's husband lifted the kettle up on his head, the handle rings jingling at his heels. They had gone a long way when Odin's son looked once behind him. He saw from the boulder heaps from the east with Hymir a many-headed army marching along. He lifted from his shoulders the outstanding cauldron. He swung Molnir before him, keen to kill, and he struck down all the lava whales. They hadn't gone a long way before Thyridia's goat collapsed, half dead in front of them. The draught beast was lamed through a curse this malevolent Loki had caused. But you have heard this. Anyone wiser about the gods may tell it more clearly. What recompense he got from the lava dweller, how he paid for it with both his children. The mighty one came to the gods' assembly, bringing the kettle which Hymir had owned, and the gods were drinking delight, ale at Aesir's every winter. This has been Hymir's poem from the Poetic Edda. Until next time.